Greetings and welcome to another installment of Quantslob. This is 14 in our basic application series. This time around, we're going to power on with our introduction to statistical hypothesis tests micro series with part three. Very simple agenda for this video two themes related to statistical hypothesis tests, some recent history and context, and of course, the answer to the timeless question what do it do? Uh, anyone who has looked at a number of different uh, sources regarding statistical uh, hypothesis testing will have noticed uh, the rather wide variety of different perspectives on the subject. Some of this variety, uh, euphemistically, has resulted from the ripple effect of some rather passionate conflict in the early, maybe mid 20th century by a number of prominent figures. So the wavy lines are supposed to be ripples. Some of the variety has simply arisen uh, from different requirements within different uh, applications from different uh, scientific disciplines. For the short term, uh, at least in our upcoming installments of this basic application series where we will feature examples of statistical hypothesis testing, the view we're going to favor is like so, right here. Uh, Data-driven, certainly a point of view that is going to appeal to data scientists and aspiring data scientists alike. Uh, basically, this means that the insights that we may gain about some population by testing are provided exclusively through the data that has been realized from the population, like a sample. Uh, simple enough. What is meant by decision process? Well, uh, very simply, that so-called statistical tests are really a special case of decision processes. That is, the concepts and techniques of statistical testing really belong uh, to the larger discipline of uh, decision theory. Uh, now, I know some true-blooded statisticians may not like this hierarchy, but the reason I particularly like it is because if something goes wrong with one of our tests, uh, we can simply blame the decision theorist uh, whose office is just down the hall. Yeah, we shouldn't do that. Uh, but this is not a humility contest. Uh, most all the important innovations in statistical testing are owed to great statisticians. But it is very convenient and accurate, I think, to regard these innovations as falling under decision frameworks. Okay, inferential induction. Okay, what does that mean? Well, uh, we've used the word uh, induction uh, before here on Quantslob. We're using it now, and we will surely use it again. We observe and measure elements that are examples coming from within a larger unobserved population. Uh, from the properties or features of these examples, we learn or gain information about features within the larger population, uh, even though we have not observed the whole population. This is an example of induction. Uh, inference, because we can utilize what we've learned about the population to draw conclusions, make conclusions. Performing a statistical hypothesis test is a form of inferential induction. Okay, so now, what do it do? Uh, well, we've already suggested some of this. Uh, in the more broad context of hypothesis tests, generically, uh, we can use our observations to talk about the relative likelihood that different conclusions or courses of action will be correct. For example, we can use data to simply determine which of two choices is, simply said, better. Uh, this example uh, illustrates the classic fork in the road scenario. We're going to make a choice and we simply want to know which uh, is more likely to lead to better results. Uh, absolutely nothing wrong with this. Much more interesting, and what is usually implied when people speak of statistical hypothesis tests, is the significance test, which, as we saw earlier, should be regarded as a special case of the more generic hypothesis test. The idea here is that if our data provides a sufficiently high threshold of certainty uh, regarding the correctness of a hypothesis, we are ready and willing to change our beliefs. The reason significance tests are such a scientific breakthrough is because in many settings, we already have an established way of doing something or an assumption about how something is behaving. But if there's a better way to do something, or if that something isn't behaving the way we think, we want to know about it for sure, but we simply need to be convinced. Uh, we're willing to change the status quo, but because in many settings doing so may be disruptive, to use a modern corporate term, we need evidence. Make sure to check out the rest of this micro series. If it should please you, it would please me greatly. Subscribe to Quantslob. That's it. That's going to do it this time around. Thank you very much for tuning in, and don't forget to stay tuned for more Quantslob.